Hi, Jeffrey. It's Rob Grogan. Thanks for talking with me earlier today. Uh, making this video hopefully help you uh, get a uh, grasp on Megasquared software more quickly. Save some headaches, hopefully. So this is uh, just pop in a web, web, web browser. Drop up into uh, msextra.com slash ms2extra. You can just do a Google search for ms2extra if you can't see that. Pop down to ms2extra downloads. And you want to click on this ms2extra megatune. This will get you the megatune file. Just save and install it. Also, just uh, do a quick Google search for Megalog Viewer Download. Uh, one of the first entries will be this page, Megalog Viewer website. You can click this link right here to download the file to install it on a Windows laptop. Alright, once you uh, download and install those programs, you uh, can open up Megatune. Uh, this is Megatune. When it opens, it's going to ask you what project you're going to do. Uh, this is a, these projects are uh, lists of what if you had like three different cars or something you tuned, and you'd have you know you'd set up parameters for each of them, which of them are tuned by speed density, which of them are tuned by off, and some basics uh, that is in the Megatune configurator. Anyway, so we're going to click Scrap E30 for this project. It says, do you want to go offline? Uh, if you hit yes, some of the options go away. So it's hit no. Alright, you'll see down here it says no file loaded. This is a gauge cluster. Well, we're not connected to the car right now, so we don't see anything. So I'm going to pop open an MSQ file, a Megatune settings file that I'm going to email you. Alright, now I'm going to fly through this because this video is going to get really big in file size. It says set and burn to values in the controller. We're not hooked up to the computer. We're not trying to update the map. Y you would n never want to do this even if you were hooked up to the computer because if you flash an entire MSQ at once, you tend to get corrupt data. Uh, generally you want to update uh, individual maps and settings individually once you're connected to the computer already. Say no. Alright, I'm going to fly through this. We got basic setup, most of this, uh, engine constants, uh, more injector and injector characteristics. This is going to be stuff, we've already got it set, it works, it's like you know, uh, some settings for the trigger wheel, for the crankshaft wheel, you know, 60 to 2. Uh, 60 teeth, 2 missing, uh, 88 degrees between the missing teeth and uh, 88 degrees between the missing teeth and TDC for number 1. Set it and forget it settings. Well, when we get to the actual tuning parts, we have the fuel table here. You can see we have uh, manifold pressure here uh, in, in kilopascals and we have RPM and then we have uh, some normalized uh, units of for the VE map, the volumetric efficiency map. Here we have the ignition table. Uh, it's uh, 12 by 12. The VE map was 16 by 16. Here we have in the y-axis we have units of pressure again in kilopascals and RPM. Well, it's RPM. You see, we're uh, it's a very conservative timing table. Uh, we took a map from a guy in Sweden running a similar setup and pulled uh, three degrees of timing uh, everywhere in boost essentially just to because we didn't dyno test this on our own this right from someone else fuel map we've made on our own both on the street and on a load bearing dyno rev limiter is set to mimic uh, stock E30 uh, the, the stock Motronic rev limiter uh, this upper rev limit means that whatever number I put here in this case 6200 it enacts and enables whatever rev limit algorithm I have set up here so that means that 6200 it cuts fuel. The lower rev limit means that once the RPMs drop after being after fuel's cut, and once they d drop down to 6,000 again, it re-enables the fuel. If it happens to hit 6,200 again, the whole process repeats. So this is when the fuel cut kicks in, and this is what the fuel cut disengages, and it goes back to normal fueling, trying to increase RPMs again. EGO controls for a closed loop uh, wideband operation is disabled uh, while we're still tuning. All right, startup idle. Most important maps here. We have the uh, cranking pulse. Uh, it's kind of set or forget. It's it's pretty good. It works just fine. Idle control. Right now we have idle control using the simplest algorithm, the PWM warm up. It's, it's just a lookup table, where based on coolant temperature, you have a certain duty cycle on our uh, pulse width modulated uh, three wire Bosch idle valve. So you'll see there's some motor settings. Or oh, actually, wrong table. This is for the uh, Based on temperature, you have a certain duty cycle. So, you know, when the motor's at 140 degrees 
Fahrenheit, coolant temperatures at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, we have 40% duty cycle. So you see these numbers gradually go down as you would expect. We're using less of the idle motor once the motor is already once the engine itself is already warm. Warm up enrichment. Uh, similar idea. Uh, coolant temperature as it warms up different values in Fahrenheit, we have extra fuel being added. The warmer it gets, the less extra fuel we add. Uh, nothing much else.